Hello. Hello. Adams. Miss Adams. Miss Adams, I am Detective Roger Williams, and this is my colleague, Inspector Chike. 
were both of the homicide department, state CID. Yes. And we're going to be investigating the murder of your mother, Mrs. Naomi Adams. Ms. Adams, uh, we deeply regret this unfortunate incident and we would like you to cooperate with us so we can apprehend and punish the killer of your mother. So any relevant information you have about your late mother may just lead us to her killer. I know too little about my mother. Well, the little you know may just be enough to lead us to her killer. Besides, what makes you think you know too little? Because she kept me away, far away in Australia for the past 17 years. I only come back once in a while. And I'm just a week old in this country. And Really sorry, Miss Adams. But would you by chance know if your late mother had any enemies? I wouldn't know. She never mentioned any. Miss mm. Adams, would you just come with us just for a few minutes? Adams, I want you to think carefully at exactly when did you discover the murder? It's about 12 midnight or thereabout. That was about the time I came back home. From where? Uh, from a friend's birthday party. We left there around 11.30 and it took us about 30 minutes to get home. Us? You and who? Me and my mother's driver. I, I, I don't drive here in this country. My mother said I shouldn't. Because she had her reasons. So, Miss Adams, when you got home, what happened? When I came into the house, I had the phone ringing. And, and it was really persistently. I just knew it was coming from the study. And I guess probably my mom has left the study to her bedroom. So I went straight to the study to actually find out who was calling in such an ungodly hour. Tell me, Miss Adams, was it in the habit of Mrs. Adams to spend late nights in her study? No. no. It, it actually became a routine for her when she started writing her new novel. Mrs. Adams was writing a novel? Yes. So what happened after that? When I walked in, I, I saw my mother's head on the desk in a pool of her own blood. And I, 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 I saw a knife stabbed and I'm back. I was so shocked that I, I had to scream and everybody in the house came running. <laughs> um, really sorry, Miss Adams. Sorry about this. But who was at home with Miss Adams? Second like man, Antina the maid. You were at home with Mrs. Adams last night, yeah? Yes, sir. Who killed Mrs. Adams? I don't know, sir. You don't know? Yes, sir. 
What is your name? Oko. Listen, Oko. According to the doctor's preliminary oral report, Mrs. Adams was most likely killed between the hours of 9 p.m. and 1 a.m. Where were you then? It rained heavily between 9 p.m. and 12 midnight. So as soon as it started raining, I retired to my room in the boys' quarters. You retired to your room? Yes, officer. Why? Was that the right thing to do as a security man? No, sir, but Mrs. Adams gave me permission to retire to my room whenever it is raining, since I don't have a security room. Okon, don't you think that was a risky thing to do? But, but, but she, she gave me permission, sir. Did Mrs. Adams by any chance receive any visitors yesterday? Did you see anybody? Uh, the last visitors, I remember, were a group of kids from Mrs. Adams' former nursery school, led by their mistress. No other visitors? Yes, sir. Where are you from? South, South. Lady? Get up. Your name is Tina, eh? Yes, sir. Where were you between the hours of 9 and 11 p.m.? In the sitting room. Yeah. In the sitting room. What were you doing? I was watching TV till 9 30 when I left for my room. Where is your room? Over there, sir. Can you show me? Yes, sleep immediately or you stayed awake for some time? I was awake, sir. <laughs> Till about 11 o'clock, sir. <laughs> when I finally slept off. So do you remember hearing anything? Did you hear any unusual sound? Anything? <laughs> I did not hear any sound, sir. <laughs> Until about 12 o'clock, sir. When from my sleep, I overheard Miss Pamela's loud scream. Isn't it strange, Tina, that you, being the only one inside this house with Miss Adams, you did not even hear her scream. And Mrs. Adams was murdered upstairs in her study, not far away from your own room here. I did not, sir. If I thought she screamed, I couldn't have heard. And because of the sound of the hammering rain on the roof, and the loud noise coming from the TV set. Now, do you remember if Mrs. Adams had any visitors last night while you were in the sitting room? Yes, sir. There were two callers that called on Mrs. Adams. And the first man, the first call I've never seen before. He called around 8 o'clock, sir. And then the second caller was the Reverend Father, Nicholas Murphy, the parish priest of St. Peter's Cathedral. He called around 8.30, sir. Okay, you have any idea when each of them left the house? Sir. I didn't see the first caller leave. But I know the Reverend Father, who came after him, left 20 minutes after, leaving the first caller upstairs with Mrs. Adams. Listen, Tina. This man, did he, did he tell you why he was calling on Mrs. Adams? He didn't, sir. He only said that it was official 
and that Mrs. Adams was expecting him. So did you confirm that with Mrs. Adams before you sent the man upstairs? I did, sir. That's the normal thing. And Mrs. Adams asked me to send him in. So, so the man must have told you his name? He didn't, sir. He only said I should tell Mrs. Adams that the man from the insurance company was around to see her. Did he tell you the name of the insurance company? Mm -mm, sir. I didn't. Now, this man, what was he like? What was he wearing? He's a, he's a, a short, thick-set man with green and white shirts. He's a kind of check. I can't remember the color of the trousers. Let me ask you one more question. The main entrance into this house, did you lock it? before you came into your own room last night? No, sir, I didn't. Why? Because the first caller was still upstairs with Mrs. Adams, so there's no way I could lock it. But I, I booted it casually from inside to prevent another caller outside from coming in without ringing the doorbell. <laughs> It was locked. I used my own personal key to open it. So who could have locked the door? Mm. Tina, could it have been Mrs. Adams herself? Tina, Sir. you told me that you were inside your room until 11 p.m. Is that correct? Yes, sir. That was when you slept off and you didn't wake up until 12 midnight? Yes, sir. So? Sir, I think Miss Adams must have locked the door herself. That's obvious, sir. Because I didn't come out of my room till Pamela returned. Is there any other means of getting into this house? No, sir. Except Trudy glass window in the kitchen. Quite often in the past, when the main key to the door was mistakenly locked inside, a kid was usually called, helped him through the window in order to recover the key. How old? About five years or thereabouts, sir. A five-year-old boy? Yes, sir. Is there anybody else who knows of this secret? I doubt, sir. Where is the boy now? <laughs> the parents of the child relocated to Abidjan along with the child a year ago. Now, is there a possibility that a full-grown man could pass through that window? I doubt, sir. Can you show me the window? I doubt, sir. Go ahead. <laughs> Sorry to bother you, but it's part of our routine investigation process. And um, we may need to bother you some more, should the need arise. 
Um, we'll just dash back to our headquarters now. And um, that reminds me, we're expecting the result of the post-mortem this afternoon to enable us to determine the exact time of death and things like that. Meanwhile, our boys are working in the lab to ensure that we get to the root of this matter. All right? Good day. Okay, let's go. Sorry, Ms. Adams, could I just see you for a minute? Just one minute. Will you come out, sir? Who are these people? What Any do you suspects? Want yes. What suspects? This matter is still under investigation. I advise you to leave this premises now. But sir, I understand you're the officer in charge of the mother case. Please. So what? I said you should leave this premises now. But sir. I said leave this premises. But Get that camera off my face. But sir. Get out of here. Why did you let these people into this place? I thought you want to have a word with them, sir. Adams, your father. And I guess he don't live here in the house with you. Why? My dad and mom are separated. My dad lives at Garden Estate. For how long have they been separated? For the past two years. You know the cause of the separation? No. And, um, I guess you have never bothered to find out. No. I was never really around since the separation. So I couldn't really inquire about their personal affairs. Besides, what has that got to do with my mother's death? Routine questions. Ms. Adams, I'd like to know, would you by chance know if your late mother had a lover? Or was she in any kind of relationship uh, during the period of separation? For goodness sake, what has all that got to do with this case? I don't remember you coming in to investigate my mother's sex life. Like I told you, I know little about my mother. Well, it's all right if you don't know. But you see, in investigative matters like this, we try our best to tighten every loose end. Good day, Ms. Adams. Good day. yet? I mean, suspects. Uh, yes. Reverend Father Nicholas Murphy of St. Peter's Cathedral and an unknown short, thick-set man have been identified by Mrs. Adams' mate as the last two callers that night, sir. Reverend Father Nicholas? Yes, sir. <laughs> That's strange. Oh, well, sit down. Thank you, sir. Uh, sir, I am more interested in interrogating this short, thick-set man, who obviously was the last visitor to leave that building that night. But the forensic boys have identified other fingerprints in the study. Now, if there were no other colors, then all fingers point to the short, Thick set man. He may just know about the murder of Mrs. Adams. But what in the name of Christ would the Reverend Father be doing with her alone at that time of night? Uh, it beats my imagination, sir. <laughs> I have no 
the slightest idea about this. But I intend to handle that aspect of the investigation personally because of the sensitive nature. Uh, apart from the discovery of uh, several fingerprints, don't you think that Mrs. Adams could have had callers after the short Dixit man? Well, there, there is a slight possibility, sir, because the housemaid said she bolted the door before she retired to her room. It means that the door must have been left open when the last visitor left the house. Except, of course, Mrs. Adams personally saw him to the main door and bolted the door. If not, then it means there probably had been other callers in the house. Familiar faces who would have walked into the house and straight up to the study without the help of the housemaid. Wait a minute. You mean it's a, a tradition that people can come straight from outside into the building? Are there no uh, fence walls? No, the house is properly fenced, sir, and there's a main entrance gate. But I understand that the pedestrian gate is usually left open until the exit of the last caller. That's carelessness. There's another angle to this, sir. If the door was bolted after the short, thick-set man left the building, it leaves two explanations as to the death of Mrs. Adams. What would you personally think was the reason for the murder of Mrs. Naomi Adams? That is exactly what I'm trying to figure out, sir. My thinking is that it may have something to do with her business. But I should think that it is more likely to do with a revenge. Ms. Adams lived a rough sex life. She's been linked with several men in love stories in the past. And the information I gather is that she spends a lot of money on her men. Her death, more or less, may be connected with a case of suspicion of promiscuity from one of such men. Could it be a case of robbery or something? I don't think so, sir. Because nothing was removed from the house, according to the housemaid and Pamela, her daughter. But there's an important lead to this matter, sir. Yes. A blue film video cassette was found in the waiting room of the study. Blue film? Yes, sir. I have uh, previewed the contents, and they were really very nasty. But the important thing is that this video cassette was rented, and I intend to find out who rented it. Do so quickly. I do not intend to leave any stone unturned, sir. I trust you, Rogers. And don't let this case prove otherwise. All right. I'll just run along, sir. Mm. Thank you very much, sir. Run along? Yeah. Uh, Roger. Sir. Well. You may be unaware of this. Mrs. Naomi Adams' murder, if not well handled, is capable of unseating the present administration. You see, Chief John Adams, her estranged husband, is the most vocal political opponent of this administration, and you know the implication, especially now with the election round corner. And of course, our dear president uh, being keen on the second term. I didn't know that, sir. This is news to me, sir. Good luck. Thank you, sir. guy with a trench coat and bowler hat 
I regret we didn't see his face at all. Why? Who is he? I don't even know who he is. There's something unusual about him. But I think we're missing something because we didn't see his face. Let's go. Let's take note of him. Reverend Father Nichols Zane. Mind your name, sir? I'm ASP Roger Williams, State CID. Oh, please come in, sir. Thank you. Please have a seat, sir. Thank you. We'll be with you in a moment. Ah, Detective Williams, I see you're finding my uh, souvenirs interesting. Yes, Father. They're really a sight to behold. Mm -hmm. I received these from the uh, Archbishop of uh, Calabar, and this is my personal favorite. I got this from the uh, Pope on my last visit to the Vatican. The Pope himself? That's correct. Well, Father, things like this remind me that I haven't prayed in a long while. Thank you very much. Let's have a seat. Feel free. Thank you, Father. So, well, Detective, what brings a uh, high-ranking police official such as yourself here to the parish house? Police business, Father. Hmm. I'd like to ask you a few questions, Father, concerning the death of the late Mrs. Adams. I understand you paid her a visit that is shortly before she was murdered. That's correct. Go ahead. All right. Uh, exactly what time did you visit Mrs. Adams? 25 minutes after 8. Would it be fair if you told me what you went to see Mrs. Adams for? She requested that uh, I see her. What did she discuss with you, Father? I don't really think that's a proper question, but as it is a police investigation, I'll try to assist. Thank you, Father. She had me come so she could uh, confess a sin that she'd committed, and she did do that. Beyond that, there's little else I can tell you. Well, Father, it is very important that we know, because it may just be a lead to knowing why Mrs. Adams was murdered. It's against canon law for me to tell you. Just as it is against the law to withhold information from the police. Well, obviously, your law and my law have a conflict. And I am not prepared to compromise my law. We're both jealous protectors of our laws. All right, Father, if you insist. I do insist. All right, Father, you said you went to visit Mrs. Adams at about 8.25. How long did your visit last? About 15 minutes. Now, Father, this is very important. It is possible that you must have seen the man who murdered Mrs. Adams because you left the house at about 8.40 thereabouts. And 30 minutes before then, a man came to visit Mrs. Adams and did not leave the building until after you had left. I didn't see anyone else in the house other than Mrs. Adams and the, uh, and the maid. However, while I was in the uh, waiting room waiting to get into the study, I did hear Mrs. Adams having a discussion with someone. And as I was leaving the study, she went to the computer room and spoke to someone through the door. All right. Father, did you, did you hear anything she said? I heard her say uh, she asked if the premium report was done yet. Uh, the gentleman in the room said he was still working on the uh, details or procedures for a uh, life insurance policy. I think this is the man we're looking for. 
Father, I want you to think carefully about this man. While you were in the waiting room, do you remember what they discussed, any of them? I believe I heard the man say that the uh, foreign life insurance company they were working with was the best in the city. This definitely is the man we're looking for. This man, when he spoke, what did he sound like? What did his voice sound like? He had a very deep voice, almost uh, baritone. All right, Father, thank you very much. I appreciate your cooperation with us. It's always a pleasure to be of assistance. I would be leaving now, Father. Um, maybe there's any additional information you can remember about this man. I'm not sure if it'll help much, but he did seem to have a slight stammer. Thank you very much, Father. We appreciate this. You're welcome. Thank you. And before I forget, you said that, uh, that you hadn't prayed in quite some time. <laughs> yes, Father. Well, you're certainly welcome to come to uh, church on Sunday and, and pray with us. I'll do that, Father. Okay. I'll do that. Thank you very Thank much. You very God much, bless you, my son. Thank you. Chuck, what's the update? I was able to check on all the life insurance companies. Sir. Okay, so did you find out anything? Yes, sir. I found out there are about 17 life insurance companies in this city. And out of uh, this number, only four are foreign based. Sir. Okay, so that leaves us with only three. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Even among the four foreign based, uh, uh, Silver Life Insurance Company is uh, presently winding up. Um, they went out of uh, business some six weeks ago. Listen, Chai, eh? check the staff list of the three insurance companies eh? and look out for a short, thick set man with a baritone voice. Eh? I don't think any of the companies would want to hide their staff list from you, especially if the man went to visit Mrs. Adams officially. Otherwise, he may just get tricky if he knows that we are onto him with inquiries. It may even be worse uh, if the man was faking or impersonating to swindle Mrs. Adams. No, I doubt that angle. I'm sure that Mrs. Adams must have been doing business with this company, which must have warranted them to send this man to represent them on a home call service. You may be right, sir. He may have useful information on the death of Mrs. Adams. That's if he didn't do it himself. I bet he killed Mrs. Adams himself. If he did not do it, then he must have seen the killer in the study through the door. You are right. That's our strongest possibility. You see, you cannot con a con man. You cannot hide what you seek, you find. Well, you can run, but you can't. Good evening, sir. Yeah, hello, Tina. It's Ms. Adams, eh? Yes, sir. She's upstairs packing some bags. Can I see her? Sure, sir. <laughs> Tangled your hair, I was even on my way out. I just can't stay here. I mean, since my mother died, it's been too haunting. I, I see her face everywhere. Well, so where are you moving out to? Um, I made a reservation at the Rockview Hotel, so I'll be staying there for a while. Why the hotel? Why not your father's place? He lives in this town, doesn't he? Yeah, yeah. Let's just not go into that now. But I'll be fine alone in the hotel. I'll be fine. All right. So what becomes of Tina, the driver and um, the security man? Um, the driver is going to come along with me. The security man is going to be here to watch over the locked house. But for Tina, I, I really don't know what to do with her. And I don't want to displace her now, you know, considering the whole situation. So, what do you intend to do with her? I don't know, that's one of the reasons I, 
send for you. Maybe you could come up with an idea of what we should do with her. Well, if she doesn't mind living in the house of a policeman, um, my wife and our new baby could do with a maid. <laughs> Congratulations. Thank you. Well, I, I don't think she will mind at all. No, I don't think so. Um, Tina? Tina? Yes, Auntie. Why are you? Come. Do you like to work in Mr. Rogers' house? No problem, Auntie. Since you are moving out and I don't have any other place to go to, you know my parents are no more. I don't mind, Auntie. You. Well, I must warn you, the house of a policeman is different from the house of Mrs. Adam. Oh, come on. She's going to adapt. <laughs> yes, All right, get your things ready. I'll just drop you off at home on my way to the office. Thank you, sir. Um... Mr. Rogers. Yeah. I have to tell you something that I haven't told you before. Yeah, so? That night, or the evening, my, my mom was murdered. She told me there was something very important she wanted to discuss with me. Something that she was doing or the, I really didn't figure it out, but unfortunately, I came back late and found her dead. And, um, well, would you know what it may just be she wanted to talk with you about? I don't know. That's why I'm telling you, you're the policeman, so you're supposed to figure it out. Not everything can be figured out. We're policemen, remember, not magicians. I just thought that was going to Anyway, we'll work out something. Okay. I'm just thinking. Strangely enough, your mother made a confession that night. Reverend Father Nicholas Murphy on the same night that she was murdered. My guess is that she may just have told him exactly what she wanted to tell you. Um, so, what, what did the Reverend Father say? He vehemently refused to tell me. He says it's against the canon laws and um, it would be a sin against God if he did. Anyway, we'll figure it out. All right, Tina, let's go. Auntie Pamela, please don't hesitate to call me whenever you need me. No problem. Sorry. Take care of yourself. Uh, Miss Pamela, we may need to call on you at the hotel if we need you urgently. Oh, that's fine. Thank you very much. So, uh, I guess you try elsewhere. Besides, the man you may be looking for might be somewhere else. I have checked all the four foreign based life insurance companies in this city. Your company is the last one. And my man seems to be nowhere. No one seems to know him. Yet, he is supposed to be in one of these companies. I bet you, wherever he may be, I'm going to find him. Well, I wish you good luck. Yes. 
can I help you? You can't help me, but I can help you. Who are you? I am Terry, an insurance agent. I understand you're making inquiries about a short tick set man. Do you know him? Yes, I'm sure about two. Where can I find him? Unless you promise to scratch my back. All right, I promise. You are looking for him in the wrong way. The personal director does not know him because the man is not a staff per se, but an agent like me. The man you are looking for is Jack Morris. Jack Morris. Morris. Yeah, an insurance agent. A short, thick set, stammerer with a bar's voice. He's often in trouble. I don't know why, but I hate his guts. Where can I find him? Morning, sir. Good yeah, morning, Jack. Have you found out anything? Um, I'm yet to find the short, thick set man, sir, but I found out his name is Jack Morris. Jack Morris. He has a full duty on him, sir. Sit down, sit down. Thank you, sir. He is not the staff of any insurance company, sir. Um, he's only a commissioned agent uh, with a solid life insurance PLC. I paid me a visit yesterday night and I met a locked house. Um, his neighbor said that uh, he's expected back on Sunday morning. So you believe that, or you intend to wait till not Sunday? Not at all, sir. Not at all, sir. I did tell the detective uh, Tom to keep watch over his house until he shows up. Good, good. I like the way we're making progress on this case. I was at a video shop, and I almost met a deadlock there. I discovered that the page that contained the borrower's name and address had been deliberately torn off. Who did that and why, I don't know. That's terrible, sir. But you see, the receptionist was able to remember that the registration number of the car in which he came corresponded with their phone number. They're smart, sir. Very smart. I've been to the licensing office. I checked on them and I discovered to my surprise that the car belongs to Dr. Thomas Lucas. Dr. Thomas Lucas? Yes. Same Impossible. Well, that's where we're stuck now. But, but, but what can Dr. Thomas Lucas be doing with a, a rented bluefin? Ask me. Your heart, you think I must be blind. You think I must be blind. You can dribble me anyhow you like. But one day for the patient owner. One day for the owner. And your river will be uncovered. Do you like it? Tell me how do you like it now? Roger Williams of the Homicide Division, State CID. I see. I'm the one investigating the Naomi Adams murder case. Oh, oh, oh yeah. I'd like to ask you a few questions. <laughs> what have I got to do with that? I mean, I can't see how I come into this. Yeah, I should think you don't have anything to do with this, sir. But um, maybe if you allow me, we could make this clearer. Oh, it's all right. You go ahead. All right, sir. Where were you on the 10th of July? Between the hours of 9 p.m. and 11 p.m. July. France. I was in France attending an international conference on AIDS. I see. Did you have any relationship with the late Mrs. Adams, sir? No, I had no relationship whatsoever with her. Mm. So that's a clear indication that you never visited her residence. So. <laughs> Why? I had no reasons to visit her residence. Okay, sir. 
Do you rent movies, sir? I buy. Mm. With due respect, sir, I'd like to ask you this question. Uh, uh, just part of our routine questioning, our investigations. Can you go ahead? Do you watch blue movies, sir? Peters, what kind of a question is that? Now listen, 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 listen. I am a Christian and I object seriously to such embarrassing questions. I mean, what kind of a thing is this? Hold it, sir. Pardon me, sir. Uh, but I don't think that you know that a rented blue movie cassette which was found in the waiting room of the late Mrs. Adams on the night that she was murdered. That's been linked to you. I guess you're driving this too far. Please, can you excuse me? Sorry for the embarrassment, sir. Pardon me, sir. But our investigations reveal that the borrower's name and address have been deliberately turned off the records. But the receptionist remembers the borrower to have come in a car with the registration number Lagos 777-AAA. You have a car with such a registration number, sir? Oh, yes, I guess I do. But it got burnt to ashes uh, two days ago in an accident. Uh, the very day I gave it to my PA as uh, a gift. Well, before you gave out the car, sir, who was using it? Well, I don't think anyone was using it. Uh, it was packed and abandoned in the garage for six months. Sir, do you have a grown-up son or daughter that's mature enough to drive a car? Oh, I have just a son, and he has his own personal car. Okay. Does he stay in the house presently? Mm, of course not. He's in school. Oh, he's in school. Could you give me his name and school address, sir? It's Mike, and he's taught in medicine at the City University. All right. Thank you very much, sir. Oh, thank, thank you, you very much. And I'm um, sorry for the embarrassment. Oh, sir. it's all right. It's all right. Thank it's you. your job. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. Oh, my. See, officer, I have told you the entire truth, nothing but the truth. I have never in my entire life visited Mrs. Adams. I don't even know Mrs. Adams. I have never visited Mrs. Adams. Besides, I, 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 I hate pornographic movies with a passion. I don't also remember visiting any gold video club. I don't rent movies. I don't. I buy movies when I find them quite interesting because I love to keep them. But you were driving the car. I was driving the car, but it was once in a while. Listen, Mike. Did you ever lend your car? to any friend of yours? Yes. You know how it is in school. You park your car one moment, someone else picks the key and drives off. I mean, my friend was always in the car. Who is your friend? Jeffrey. Jeffrey? Jeffrey who? It's Jeffrey Adams. Jeffrey Adams. Yes. Does he have any connection with the late Mrs. Adams? Yes. He is the um, son of the very well-known political juggernaut, um, John Adams. And um, he's also the, uh, the stepson of um, the late Mrs. Naomi Adams. So Mrs. Adams had the stepson? I'm afraid yes, sir. All right. Thanks, Mike. Thanks for cooperating. All right. See you. Not tell me that Mrs. Adams had a stepson. But sir, you didn't ask me that. Well, actually, Chief John Adams had two wives, late Mrs. Adams and the one presently staying with him. And uh, each of the wives gave birth to a, a child each. Jeff is the son of the second wife, sir. 
How was the relationship between Jeff and Mrs. Adams? Well, I wouldn't say much, sir, but I know they maintained a cordial relationship, sir. Did they have quarrels? Do you, can you remember? Oh, I don't know, sir. But even if they did, nobody told me, sir. How often did uh, how often did Jeff visit Mrs. Adams? Mm, on a weekly basis, sir. Until last six months, he ceased visiting. But, sir, if not for the tape that was traced to his name, I would have concluded that Jeff didn't visit Mrs. Adams till after her death. And besides, I didn't even know when he came to that house that night, sir. Um, let me ask you something, Tina. Do you think Jeff has any reason to kill Mrs. Adams? No, I don't think so, sir. That boy, he's too harmless to think of that, sir. Hmm. Okay. Yeah, I You've been unfair to me. What? How? I told you I'm not ready for this thing. Can't you understand? How do you expect me to understand? How? Haven't I waited long enough? Look at it, tomorrow is going to make it six months since we started dating. Are you refused you to let me in? Come on, am I not human enough? Eh? Jeff, I understand the way you feel. But I love the way we are. It's just that I prefer platonic relationships. Platonic? What are you talking about? I am hot here. I'm, I, I, I'm, I'm burning here. Can't you oh feel God. me? Just Come on, just, baby. Just, 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 listen. Just, just let me be. Okay, it's all right. Just see. Honey, just give me once. Mm -mm. Just once and I will be okay forever. No, no, I promise you, my no, dear. Listen, no. listen. Remember what I told you the very first day I saw you, okay? Just remember. Eh? Come on. Just quench me. Arrest. For what? By the time we get to the station, you find out. I'll cuff him. Officer. Officer, please take it easy now. Wait, wait, wait. wait, 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 wait. Take it easy. Wait, wait, wait. I have to call my sister. Officer, okay, okay. Oh, officer, let us smoke it out. I move. Please come on. Take it easy now. What's wrong with you? Appreciate it, and it will even be in your own interest if you tell me the truth when I ask you these questions. Did you hear me? Yes, sir. Did you visit your late stepmother on the 10th of July? Yes, sir. What time did you get there? 30 p.m. Yeah, sure. Very well, sir. When you got there, did you see her? Yes, I did. And what happened? When I when I walked to the study room and and opened the door, I saw to my greatest surprise my stepmother lying face down on the desk with a knife in her back. I was frightened and closed the door immediately. 
I, I thought of calling Tina or the police when, when I thought of the police putting me as number one suspect. I decided to wave off the idea and, and rushed downstairs and ran away. So when I reached home, I, I discovered that I left the, a videotape in, in, the, in the drawer in the two room. I, I left it there because it was a blue film. And I don't want my stepmom to see it. So when I, when I, when I realized that I left it there, the thought of going back to the house frightened me. Though I knew that the videotape will, will, will give me away to the police when they begin their investigation, I decided to go to the video club. And, and somehow I tore the, the record book, bearing my name and, 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 and the address. Jeff. Sir. Did you kill Mrs. Naomi Adams? I swear to God, I didn't kill her. I mean, how can I kill my own mother? I don't have any reason whatsoever. She's, she's so fond of me. Oh, believe me, please, I didn't kill her. I believe you, but I'm going to keep you in her custody until the end of this investigation. You, you can't do such a thing. I have academic programs to run. Shut up. I have no choice but to detain you as a witness to the murder of Mrs. Naomi Adams. And I'm going to charge you for accessory after crime. And also for failing to report the incident to the police and for destroying evidence linking you to the murder of Mrs. Naomi Adams. Come here, over. The short thick set man has just turned up. Over. Inspector Chike, Homicide Division, Stacey ID. And so what? Is that why you should barge into me like that? You are wanted by the police in connection with the mother of uh, Mrs. Naomi Adams. Why? I have nothing to do with that, and I don't know anything about it. Shut up and say what you have to say at the police station. <sighs> all right, all right. I'll make a call in, I'll come out and go with you. No, I'm sorry, we don't have time for that. Cuff him! Are you arresting me? Uh, you, you don't Chief John Adams is raising hell about the detention of his son. We have to do something, Rogers. Rogers, sir, do you really think that boy could have murdered uh, his stepmother? I don't think so, sir. But I think he has a skeleton in his cupboard. You never can tell, sir. Why didn't he alert the police about the murder instead of going ahead to destroy every evidence that links him to the murder? Besides, if we did not suspect Mrs. Adams' daughter when she alerted the police, we have no reason to suspect uh, her stepson. I still don't think we have enough uh, evidence against him. I agree, sir, but his attempt to destroy every evidence linking him to the murder made the police to raise an eyebrow that he may just have um, an idea about the murder. I understand, Roger. I understand. But I still suggest that the boy be released, since we know that he didn't commit the murder. Instead, 
you get one of your boys to keep an eye on him. All right. I'll do that, sir. I'll release him immediately. Do that quickly. And, uh, sir, the Jack Morris man, yes. the insurance man believed to have been the last caller on Miss Adams on the night that she was murdered. Yes, what about him? We just brought him in 20 minutes ago and we started interrogating him just before you sent for me. He is insisting he did not kill Mrs. Adams. Do you believe him? I don't believe him, sir. <sighs> well, if he didn't do it, then who might have killed Mrs. Naomi Adams? not to believe what you've told me. You killed Mrs. Naomi Adams. You did! I didn't kill her, but I saw her die. You saw her die? Yes, but I didn't see whoever killed her. What do you mean by that? Who killed her then? I don't know. Whoever did that did it from outside study. Mm -hmm. Go ahead. On that first night, I was in the computer room next to the study, preparing an insurance report for Mrs. Adams. not immediately report to the police? Because I had already known the consequences of such action. I would have been made the first suspect languishing in the hands of the police for what I didn't do. So I ran away to avoid that. I don't believe you. And I put it to you that you murdered Mrs. Adams. This is the same excuse that all criminals give to avoid punishment of the law. Yes. You killed Mrs. Adams, and I will make you confess to your crime. Dip him inside. Dip him. Dip him. Okay, okay. Are you ready to talk now? Why are you doing this? I did nothing. Believe me. Why should I kill my would-be client? Mrs. Adams had already agreed to insure her life as well as her daughter's with our insurance company for a huge sum. And I was going to reap a big commission as a linking agent. Besides, apart from the agent-client relationship, I had no other relationship with Mrs. Adams. And I had no cause to murder her. I knew and saw her only about two weeks to her death. Believe me. <laughs> Listen, Mr. Jack Morris, I will release you from this touch the moment you tell me the truth. Give me the description of the man you saw leaving the building. He stole about six feet, heavily built with broad shoulders, dark in complexion. He wore a black trench coat 
Who that bola hugs? Did you see his face? I didn't see his face, but I saw his back view. Okay. Now this man, does he drive a BMW car? Yes, yes, a BMW car, yes. You're sure? Yes, sir. What is the registration number of that car? I didn't see the registration number. It was too far to be seen from upstairs. But there was something I picked from the wet ground where he parked his car when I came out of the house. I saw it drop from his coat pocket when he brought out his car key to open the door. It might give you a rough lead to him. Where is it? It's in my pocket. Sergeant. Which pocket? It's there. A gold packet pen with an inscription on it. I've been using it since then. The Valentine SK from Naomi. visited Mrs. Adams? I've never, sir. Well, do you know if uh, Mrs. Adams had uh, a lover, a boyfriend? I have no idea, sir. But even if she had, I, I never saw any, sir. Um, wait, wait. Do you know if um, she had um, a business associate called SK? I wouldn't know, sir. Think well, you may have forgotten. Sir. If I knew anything, I, I wouldn't hesitate to let you know, sir. It's the way we live, don't ask me why. The whole setup seems complicated. I don't know, I don't know. We're edging close to the murderer of Mrs. Adams. But I'm sure we're missing something somewhere. But I'm sure we're missing something somewhere. I really don't know, but I'm sure of that. Nobody who lived in Mrs. Adams' house seems to have any idea of the heavily built man who is probably the bearer of the SK initials and also the lover of the late Mrs. Adams. Only Jeff thinks he saw him twice during his visit to the house. Even then, he's not sure of the facial looks. Sometimes I even doubt Tina. How come she claims not to have ever known or seen the heavily built man in the house? When even Jeff, who lived off the house, saw him once or twice. I must be missing something somewhere. I regret I never saw the face of this man at the funeral of the late Mrs. Adams. But I must find him at all cost. Good day, sir. Yeah, uh, Jack, what's new? Uh, so someone came here to burn Jack Morris and we turned him down and asked him to come back later when you would be in the office. No, I can't afford to release Jack Morris now. I need him for a few more days until I'm able to get that big man we're looking for. In fact, I want us to charge him to court for accessory after crime. Anyone who wants to bail him should go straight and see the DCP. In fact, I want to go see him right now. Anything up? No, I have an idea that I want him to endorse. I hope it's not something bad. No, no, no. Sit down, let me just share it with you. <clears throat> Listen, I want to get the commissioner's permission. Good day, Mr. Richard. Miss Adams, you're welcome. Hi. Good day. Miss Adams, how are you? Fine, thank you. I would like to see you privately. All right. Jack, I'll see you later. Miss 
sit down. Thank you. Yeah. So, what can we do for you, Ms. Adams? You don't look too happy. Mr. Roger, much as I would like to appreciate your job as the investigating officer of my mom's murder, I have to tell you frankly that I am not happy with the new dimension your investigation has assumed recently. I don't understand what you mean. What I mean is that I don't like the way you and your men have been going about asking questions and making inquiry about my late mother's sexual life. Your inquiry would definitely tarnish her image, posthumously and obviously result to a sex scandal bringing this honor and this repute to the Adams family. At least, there should be respect for the dead. B besides, you, your, your unhealthy investigation is capable of destroying my father's political career he has built over the past 20 years. All I want to do is advise that you desist from such things and let the Adams family have a little respect and honor. Well. Ms. Adams, I understand exactly how you feel, and anyone in your position would feel the same way too. But I must let you know that I am on a state assignment here, and it does not require any kind of intrusion of personal sentiments. You see, I expect you to understand the magnitude of this investigation, owing to the high level of crime involved. As uh, much as we do not like to necessarily interfere in the private lives of people in the course of our investigations, we will not fail to do so if the need arises. Well, you said you would like to know what your late mother wanted to tell you before she was suddenly murdered. I should think that you would want to wait patiently and hear the news. We may just be edging towards it. Well, if that's the only way your investigation is going to find that out, I am no longer interested. In any case, that is not going to alter the cause of my investigation. This is to notify the general public that the State Commissioner of Police has placed a handsome reward of 5 million naira for anyone who offers any relevant information leading to the arrest of Mr. SK. Mr. SK is a heavily built man wanted connection with the mother of Mrs. Naomi Adams. The man whose face has not been clearly identified by the police was seen hurriedly leaving Mrs. Adams' residence shortly after the mother on the 10th of July. The man who is believed to be a close associate of late Mrs. Adams is suspected to have murdered her. He's about six feet tall, heavily built with broad shoulders, and fond of wearing long coats and a bowler hat. Anyone who has useful information leading to the arrest of this man should contact Detective Roger Williams of the Homicide Division, State CID, or the nearest police station. All informants and their information will be treated in strict confidence. My name is Tacha, late Mrs. Adams' driver. Uh, now driving Pamela, sir. Oh, yes, yes, yes. I remember you said that. Today. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. Yes, so. Sir, I, I came in response to the police announcement requesting for information about SK, sir. What do you know about him? Sir, he is my reward guaranteed. 100%, as long as your information is useful. I am sure it is more than useful, sir. Go ahead. Sir, uh, SK, the man you're looking for, was my madam's boyfriend. Yeah. His full name is Sam Kanji, a street worker whom my madam fell in love with. 
I never liked him, sir, because he's greedy and selfish. All he wanted was my madame's wealth. Uh, my madame often bought him some expensive gift, including his, uh, uh, his uh, BMW car. Sir, he never loved my madame. He became angry and hostile to her when my madame started dating someone else. They had violent quarrel. Twice that month, my madame was murdered. You know where we can find him? Sir, my madame uh, lodged him in a permanent suit at the Bizu Town. Bizu Town. But uh, I wonder if he's still there. But his old mother and younger sister live in a uh, in small flat in Adjigunle. Uh, perhaps she might have an idea of his whereabouts. You know the place? Can you take me there? Uh, uh, no, sir. Uh, I am driving Miss Pamela Adams to the island. I only sneaked in here by chance while going to fold the car. Uh, sir, when I drop her, I will definitely come back. Uh, but for now, why don't you send your boys to the Bees Hotel? All right. Thank you very much. Uh, thank you, sir. Uh, you might need his picture, sir. Do you have his picture? Uh, there's this uh, there's this group photograph, which he appeared. I'll bring it when I'm coming, sir. Good. That will be very good. Sir, is my information worth the five million naira? You have to, sir. Tina, you wait for me outside. And next time, don't barge into this office like that. I'm sorry, sir, but I brought your food, sir. Will you get out. Sorry, sir. Uh, Mr. Tasha, you will get your five million naira as soon as your information leads us to arrest SK. Thank you very much. I will, I will come back in the next two hours. That will be very and nice. Sir, yes. please do me one thing. What is that? I don't want my name in any publicity. I wouldn't want to taste SK's hostility and aggression. Please, sir. All right. You have nothing to worry, Mr. Tashi. Thank you, sir. Thank, Thank you for the information. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Ready an ambulance, call an ambulance quickly. All right, HMD1, HMD1 calling Deputy Commissioner, over. Yes, I can read you, sir. Yes, sir. The driver who gave us information on, on the SK man is dead. We found him dead by the roadside. They confirmed dead, sir. We just sent for an ambulance, sir. Thank you, dear. Sweetheart, don't you think this mystery man called SK may have fled the city with all this development? No. I don't think so. You see, the truth is that he thinks Tasha is dead. He doesn't know that Tasha is in the hospital receiving treatment. Serious? Mm -hmm. You mean Tasha is alive? Tasha is not dead. He's alive. In the next few days, he's going to regain consciousness. And then I'll deal with this matter properly. 
Asha is in the mortuary. The dead has no place in a hospital ward. Your hands up! Your informant gave you wrong information. Mr. SK. The game is up. Handcuff him. Come on, take him. First, now, who killed Mrs. Adams? I did kill her. I know nothing about her. I'm a... Then why did you kill Tasha? I had to stop him from blowing my cover. But I didn't kill Mrs. Adams. You were seen leaving the premises just after she was murdered. If you didn't do it, who did? Officer, I don't, I don't know. You will tell me the truth. By the time I finish with you, you will tell me the... Dip him in. No. No. Oh, oh. Will you talk now? Okay, officer. I'll tell you everything. All right, spill it out. Let's hear. I actually went there on that night. I took kill her, but before I got there, somebody else had already killed her. Why did you plan to kill her? Because she ditched me for someone else. I warned her. But she began to date my close pal and stopped financing me. I tried in her, but she wouldn't stop. So on that fateful night, I went there with the intention of killing her. But before I got there, someone else had already killed her. You are lying. If you did kill her, then who did? Someone else did officer. If Mr. Nobody killed Mrs. Adams, then you are certainly that Mr. Nobody. I'm innocent. Believe me, officer, I'm innocent. When I finish with you, you will tell Dip him inside! Oh. Dip him in! This case is getting too complicated. I believe there is something very important I haven't realized. I think, I think I'm missing something out somewhere. SK, 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 SK. SK was the man we were looking for. And now we've got him. But he's claiming he did not kill Mrs. Adams. Even though he admitted he wanted to. He also confessed he murdered Tasha, but not Mrs. Adams. With all the torture, he's maintaining the same thing. With all the torture. Suppose he did not kill Mrs. Adams. Then who else? Fear art. 
take a flight It's a game of chance, a game of life It's the way we live, don't ask me why You see you cannot con a con No, no, it's okay. Um, five years is enough to make it dusty. Any problem? No, no, no. It's okay. Thank you very much, Eddie. You're welcome. Naomi Adams. I did. I did. You did, eh? Yeah. I didn't just kill her. I made sure I destroyed her before I finally killed her.
Tina, <laughs> why did you kill Mrs. Naomi Adams? <laughs> it all started five years ago. Exactly. <laughs> On the night of my wedding. <laughs> I enjoy every minute. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I love you so much. I love you too. <laughs> I, I love you too. So happy. Good. Did you enjoy it? Why not? Did you? <laughs> Do you want more? <laughs> yes. <laughs> Tell me. How did you like it best? Excuse me. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <Yes. laughs> Your friend. <laughs> Hello. All right, all right. Uh, where exactly? Okay, I'll be there now. Uh, yes, okay. Bye. Honey, who is it? It was my father. Your father? His car had a breakdown two kilometers away from here. I might have to go and help him. No, you can't go. <sighs> I mean, your father can always get another mechanic to do that. And besides, this is our first night. We'll leave you. No, please. come on, honey. I understand. But look, my, my father trained me as a mechanic so that I can be of help to his transport business. Not on our first night. I can't let him spend any more money on any mechanic now. I have to go and help him. Honey, I have to go. I'll be back soon, okay? Oh my God. Hmm? Please don't go. Please. I'll be back soon. Oh, come on. Are you are you angry? I will soon come back, eh? We will continue. Hmm? Sorry, my son, to bother you at this unholy hour. I know you are not supposed to be disturbed today, but I can't find another mechanic. Besides, it's damn too late. It's okay, Papa. That is why I'm here. Eh? I would always be there for you, always. Eh? Let, let's check the bus. Let's... Okay, my son. I don't know actually why it stopped. Um, have you checked the? I don't know. I've checked everything. I can start. I don't know actually. Recognize her. And so my father in law followed it up. But she suppressed everyone with her money and connection. And so I vowed never to rest until I took revenge on the woman who made me a widow on my very first night. Relationship with her husband by 
by reporting every bit of her unfaithfulness to her husband, who later caught her red-handed twice with men and abandoned her. And secondly, I snatched her boyfriend Eske from her. I made Eske to suck her wealth and spend on me until she finally broke up with, with him. And deadly, I killed her. I killed her. I ended her life, thereby completing my missions in her house. <laughs> How did you kill Mrs. Adams? When Eske discovered that Mrs. Adams was dating his friend, he became wild and threatened to kill her. I didn't like that threat because I wanted to kill her with my own hands. Because I had vowed Unless I kill her with my own hands. That my husband's soul would not know peace. So, that night, when he escaped to come and kill her, I knew he was coming. So, I killed her first. I killed her early. Before he entered the study. Mrs. Adams, but he discovered that someone else had already stabbed her to death, not knowing I was the one. And when police investigation began to ask questions about him, I denied ever knowing him. When I overheard you discuss with Tasha, I knew Tasha was about to betray him. So I called him and he followed him immediately and knocked him out. And when I also heard you tell your wife that Tasha didn't actually die, that he was receiving treatment at National Hospital, I called him. I did not know it was only a trick to trap him. <laughs>
the gun down. I'm on a thousand Oh my god, Don't leave me dead! Don't try now! Shoot you! Put the gun down. It's a game of life It's the way we live, don't ask me why You see you cannot con a con man You cannot hide what you seek you find Well you can run but you cannot run so far But you cannot hide. 